Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Tom 10, a game by Fervent Workshop. This is a two to four player game that plays cooperatively, competitively, or in teams. And in the game, you are playing as a Tom 10, a kind of Christmas gnome in which you're going to go throughout the last month of the holiday season completing Christmas tasks. Complete the tasks, move along days on the calendar, utilize your ability to work with their die to complete these tasks to gain these cards to score points on three different periods, the Epiphany, Christmas, and uh, St. Nuts Day. And basically at the end of the game, whoever has the most points around the scoring tracker is the winner. Will you complete the most Christmas tasks, score the most points, and end with the most obviously at the end of the year? Find out in the game Tom 10. Let's do it. To begin setup for the game, you're going to simply start by placing the main game board out within reach of all players. Then take a die and place a die on each of the candlestick spaces on the board. These are the Sunday spaces of the calendar. Each player that's playing a game is going to receive one of these circular discs and you will place them on the start space and one on the zero space for each player, the victory point tracker and the day tracker. Each player is also going to get four dice. You'll take these dice and each player will roll them. You can also give each player a basic or advanced rules depending on the rules that they're playing. Set aside the advanced cards if you're not utilizing them for the game mode, which I'll kind of explain in the review, but I'll cover mainly the basic game here in which case you'll shuffle the main deck of cards and deal out four face up on the table. The rest of the dice are gonna be left next to the cards so that you can take them as needed. And of course the rule book. Otherwise, you're basically ready to go. It's a quick setup. Tom 10 is a rondelle based game. You're gonna be rolling dice, moving down the rondelle and scoring points. The rondelle is gonna be based on days and days translates to time. And eventually your time will run up. Which means that if you end the game and players are behind you, they'll progress until their time is up as well. To start the game, the player who's on top of the stack here is going to be the player that goes first. And how it works is uh, you've rolled your dice. You're now going to get to take one of two actions. Action one is you can select one of the many spaces on the four cards presented here. And each card has three spaces. Take a number of die equal to the number and place it on that space and score the benefit and spend the days. This card here specifically says that it requires a die of four or die that accumulate up to four. And then you'll spend one day on the board here and gain one victory point. So if I wanted to do that, uh, I would have to have at least four value in die. So if I had this four here, I could take this and place this here. That will give me blue one day on December 1st here, and it will let me score one star. So blue will actually move up one space on the victory track. Now I'm going to end and the next player will go because I'm no longer on top or in the back. So the next player is yellow here and yellow can take their next action, which is going to be primarily what I just did here. The other action that you can take in this game is you can rest. When you rest, you'll be able to a, well, first you'll have to move up one day on the calendar here, but you'll take up to four dice from the pile here and add it to your supply. However, you may never add more than up to seven die. So the highest number you're gonna have is seven here. And when you do, you'll also roll, uh, kind of re-roll all the die that you have, kind of giving you a new combination of dice. If you do this, however, that will end your turn. However, it will give you a brand new supply for hopefully better odds at getting the cards you need on your next turn. We'll just continue playing though. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these die back. We'll start with our four here. And I am now going to have to spend. I'll spend this five here, place it on this five here. And I'm going to have to spend two days as yellow, one and two. Now I'm in front of blue. So if it was just yellow and blue playing this game, then it would be the next player's turn after this one, which would be blue, because they are in the back. They're gonna gain three victory points though. So they're gonna scoot over blue by one, two points and be at three. Now it's blue's turn. Blue needs to have eight in order to collect this card here. How do you collect cards? Well, if all three spaces on a card are ever filled, you are going to basically get that card. So filling up the second space can be risky if you think somebody else will be able to spend die in order to get that space. However, in this case, I have a five, a two, and a one. So to get that eight, I'll actually have to spend three die as opposed to the regular two, but I'll do that. So I'll go ahead and place all three die here. And that will let me spend three days, one, two, and three. Now I'm on December 4th and score five victory points. One, two, three, four, and five. Now I'm at six victory points. And because the card is filled, these die are gonna go away and I am going to gain this card face down. This is gonna give me victory points whenever we reach Christmas, the Epiphany, or Satanate's Day. 
back to yellow's turn here and they're going to go ahead and reveal a new card from the stacks so that there are now more variations of choice and i have two fours and a one so i'll look around here looks like i have an eight there so i will take these die here in place here i'll spend my three days one two and three and then i'll gain five victory points as yellow now i'm at eight and we'll rinse and repeat of course blue is behind so blue will be the next player going if yellow instead had been behind yellow would actually keep going and blue has no die. So like I said before, there is an action you could take, which is rest. You can gather these four new die, roll all die that you have, and you can always choose to rest beforehand if you want, and then spend one day. Luckily, I am blue, and I am still, I'm on top, and I'm still in the back, basically, so I'll actually get to take an extra turn. I would then progress and add more cards here, uh, add more dice to the cards here. And that's how the game would progress. It would keep going down this game board. When somebody reaches a Sunday on the board, in this case it's the 6th, 13th, 20th, 27th, etc., you'll actually get this die and you'll roll it into your supply. If you already have seven dice, just leave it there for the next player. Whenever you reach a Christmas spot, you'll check to see how many cards you've acquired and score a bonus point for each one. The same is said for Epiphany and St. Nut's Day as well. The end of the game, after every player has reached the last day on this calendar here, then that is going to end the game. In which case, you'll check to see who has gotten along on the scoring track or the farthest, and that player is the winner. Yep, it's a pretty simple game. All right, so my review for the game Tom Tam. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the advanced version a little bit. There's also a cooperative version, a 2 by 2v2 version of the game, but I want to kind of go into how the advanced mode works. The setup is all the same, everything is basically the same, except at the beginning of the game, you're going to get a number of the base cards in the game to start with, along with a clan card, and you'll have an option. You can either A, take the clan card and a regular card, or you can take all three of the regular cards and ditch the clan card. Clan cards are special, they're going to have a unique ability or a unique function that will score you points at the end of the game. Like for instance, this one here says that you may flip one claimed card face down, permanently disabling it. And if you do so, you can reroll some or all of your dice. And at the end of the game, you're going to score four victory points for every face down card that you have. And so this is a good way in order to gain value whenever you rest. You rest, flip over one of your cards, because now all cards come into play uh, a face up as opposed to face down, because in the base game it doesn't matter. If you have cards, you, when you score on these three locations, you'll just score one, two, three, four, however many that you have. But in this case now, these things will actually trigger unique scoring positions, and the clans can give you additional bonuses. The base cards, now you'll notice on the card here, there are the three locations we previously talked about, and also there's of course the art, and just below that are some symbols. And these symbols are going to give you unique powers. They'll give you unique bonuses when reaching certain spaces on the uh, area. Um, and you can turn them over or turn them to the side to utilize them at certain points. Maybe it'll let you change a die's rotation or gain a new die. Maybe it's whenever a player lands on you, you'll score additional points. So it adds a little bit more variety to the game Tom Tam. And it's a kind of a nice, cool way of uh, advancing the game's basic strategy. We played this game live, actually. And we did learn the base game first. And then we came back and played the advanced mode of the game. And the advanced mode of the game is definitely more fun. There's a lot more variety and strategy in how you take take cards and which ones you want to take and what abilities they present on them, gathering a certain number of advanced cards that say you score points when players land on you is exceptionally good with multiple players because now you have a higher likelihood of doing so uh, or, or either landing on them or then landing on you, it's one of the two, um, or scoring two additional points for every single mitten card that you have on the field. And this card starts as a mitten and hopefully you can gain additional cards that have the mitten symbol, but it only happens on St. Nut's Day. So this is kind of an end of game scoring card. And that just adds to the fun of the game. This is a rondelle game at its core. You're basically moving from the day path here. If you're the last player, you can take multiple turns until you become not the last player. And you're trying to gain dice as best as you can to utilize them as best as you can as well. Spending three dice for a die spot that typically requires two is not the greatest idea. Spending more than one die on a space that presents you with a one through six option is also not the greatest idea. It can come down to the wire and you might actually have to make tough decisions in this game, but you want to be as efficient as possible, securing as many cards as possible, spending the most days you can for the best variety of victory points, and securing the cards you need based on the combination of cards that you want to utilize in the advanced game. This is 
a really excellent game. This is a great Christmas game. It plays very well. It's very simple to set up. It's very simple to teach. It's one of those games that you can get into quite simply. And once you've played this game once, you can jump into the advanced mode of play and begin learning how to collect these cards and what combination of effects they're going to present to you and uh, scoring yourself a victory at the end of the game. I really enjoy this game. I like pretty much everything about it. I like the style of artwork, the old Christmassy style artwork with all the different Christmas gnomes. The fact that it comes with double-sided rulebook uh, base rules for the uh, play for each player and explains the game quite well. This is pretty much all you're going to actually need to know once you're kind of just taught the first two paragraphs of the game rules. And then throwing in the advanced rules, which explains to you like, oh, this symbol means work. And whenever you do these things, you can actually add a bonus by turning this card over. Or this little coffee cup means to rest. And they work really well. You understand the difference. The, the hat is for the gnomes and the gnomes like to work. And the coffee cup is when they're on their break. And that's when you can use the ability of the cards. And so this presents a nice simplistic game that has a good chunk of strategy a unique Christmas theme, and there's not a whole lot of Christmas themes out there that I've played that I've been like, oh yeah, this is, this is really good. It's something I'd play with a hot cup of cocoa on a Christmas morning with my family, but this one does that quite well. Delight family and friends by starting a new Christmas tradition. It's like the new Elf on a Shelf for board games. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. This is, this is really good. I love Rondell games though, so I am always gonna be one-sided to a Rondell game if it presents itself well. And this one does a great job of that. It's simple, straightforward, unique strategy, dice rolling. Ah, placing the dice in the spots and gaining the cards feels good to collect them. The artwork is great, style, old school Christmas, kind of like German, uh, I would say, like a German kind of Krampus or like the, the garden gnomes and whatnot, but in a very cheerful way. Uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this game. Uh, if I played board games on Christmas with my family or wanted to start doing so, this would be a game I would definitely consider picking up. In fact, I would I, I would pick this game up, actually. I, I think my family would quite enjoy this one. It's simple enough for even my grandma and grandpa can play, so... Yeah, it's solid. And of course, it doesn't have to be on Christmas. This is a fun Rondell dice placement game that you can play pretty much whenever. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of negatives to say about this game. Uh, it's very, it's, it's, there's interaction with player, you're gathering cards away from people, you're interacting with your dice, but it's nothing super, super mean either. It's a really solid family game. If you like whatever I've talked about here, then you're gonna be enjoying this game. The fact that it also comes with unique game modes, not only just the advanced mode, but with the different aspects of cooperation or even throwing in um, the 2v2 mode, then I would definitely at least, I would at least go ahead and check out the campaign if see, and see if this is something for you. This one really surprised me. Yeah, this gun is gonna get my seal of recommendation. I really, really enjoyed this game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Tumpton, a fervent workshop game. This was a lot of fun. If you uh, would like to see the game and decide to pick it up for yourself, there will be a link down below in the description. And if you've seen more than one of our videos and you'd like to continue to see new videos of different games, and I mean a variety of different games, we did a 4x two hour game previously to this, and then we did a, a drinking card game party, non-family, 18 plus kind of game. Uh, and now we're doing a Christmas game. So I like all different types of games on this channel. If you're one of those people that just enjoys games that play well, uh, definitely consider subscribing to us and hitting that bell notification button. We have a website on filteredgamer.com with blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And of course our Instagram with updated daily posts of all unique games with beautiful uh, photo photography by Brian. Um, not only our graphic designer, but also does a lot of beautiful Beautiful photography that we controlled basically the entire Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I wish you a Merry Christmas if you're watching this somewhere near Christmas, a Happy New Year, or perhaps a Happy Halloween, my favorite. <laughs> Talk to you guys next time.